The point of this video is to state that there will be disruption. I don't know about the death rate uh, from what we hear. The death rate's about 1-2%. to But what we can expect is disruption in schools. Public schools will close, private schools will close. And I think you'll also see the emergence of teleschooling as an option. And, a, and if we encounter this problem long-term, teleschooling will probably emerge as a long-term option for people uh, schooling their children at home with teleschooling opportunities. I think it'll be more like a long snow day. You know, the weatherman says it's about to snow and people run to the grocery stores and start uh, loading up on bread and milk. Probably would be a good idea to add other items to that, like toilet paper, diapers, baby food, uh, even maybe canning jars. Again, because it's gonna be a disruption, not that you're gonna catch a virus when you go out. Uh, I think as you make these purchases, uh, the purchases will accelerate to non-cash. These merchants aren't going to want to take cash from your grubby hands, so they will prefer you pay with plastic electronic transactions rather than paper money transactions. As this proceeds, I think the police will assume martial law-like powers. I would not be surprised if you see road stops as police use this as an opportunity to flex their muscles, crime intervention, as they may call that, and they will assume these martial law-like powers with uh, road stops and checkpoints, uh, even in your own community, within your own county, within your own city. But I don't think you should expect any protests over that. Who's going to come out when everybody is imposing a self-lockdown? And probably with your TV personalities and government personalities saying, you need to stay inside. Don't run outside. You may get sick, even though, uh, unless there is martial law declared, which I don't think that will happen, uh, it's just going to be the suggestion of leaders and personalities, like I said, these TV personalities. So there will be no protest. You're not going to see thousands of people protesting anything the government's doing because people aren't going to want to get together in the midst of a contagious illness outbreak. I think the government leaders and statists will use this as a mandate for vaccinations. Vaccinations uh, for this virus and probably other viruses saying is uh, proof why people ought to be vaccinated. And I'll tell you proof uh, vaccinations are harmful is uh, that Jonas Salk, the creator of the polio vaccine said himself that since the vote polio vaccine the only cases of polio were from the vaccine if you know anyone who has Guillain-Barre syndrome that is polio it's just another word for polio and Guillain-Barre syndrome is contracted after vaccinations doctors don't like to admit that uh, I even had one doctor say that he would lose his license if it if he admitted that or was on record for admitting that. So I think the status will use this as a mandate for, for vaccines. As well, I think uh, you'll expect to see lighter air traffic if you're traveling via airplane. Uh, I think the airports are going to be a little less busy. We're already hearing about that overseas in Europe, uh, Middle, Middle Europe, uh, Middle East, and, and Asia. Traffic is quite a bit lighter. I think it's already ending up a little bit lighter on the West Coast uh, because a lot of traffic going to Asia has uh, lightened up. And I think as well, who knows, TSA may use this as an opportunity to search your bags even more, do your body cavity search, take your temperature, and again, who knows, maybe they'll use this as an opportunity to collect your DNA with a, a cheek swab so that they can claim that they have some record of your coming by and uh, whether you break out with a coronavirus or not. So what are the unknown side effects? Well, if we knew them, they wouldn't be unknown, right? I just believe this is going to be very disruptive, and I'm on the record now of saying that this will be disruptive. <laughs>